Hey everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comedian and host of Bachelorette Recap, a guy's review. I wanted to make a reaction video to the article written today in HuffPost.com alleging uh, sexual assault that happened uh, with Easy, um, a contestant on this year's Bachelorette. I do apologize, I'm making this video from uh, my car here in a Starbucks parking lot that I've been on the road, so hopefully that's okay with you guys. Um, I wanted to first and foremost say it's always important to believe uh, victims and people that come forward with um, um, allegations of sexual assault. Uh, it's important to know that the victim, in, in, in almost all cases, has nothing good that comes out of it, their name gets smeared, uh, people uh, slut shame them, this and that. It's really important to know that um, in this story that we're going to talk about, the victim alleges that 10 years ago um, at a party, I think it was on New Year's Eve, that she was raped by Easy. These are her allegations. She initially, um, she hasn't um, uh, gone to the police, she's not looking for anything out of it, any form of settlements. She really just didn't want people to see him as this fun-loving guy and he can prey on future victims. Th these are the words that she said in this article. I think it's important too, it's one thing when there's drama circul circulating throughout a community, it's another when there's something written by a a uh, proper news organization. Uh, a lot of sources are vetted. A lot has to go into this because if they don't have sources, if they can't back up their claims, then he could sue them. So while it's always innocent till proven guilty, a lot of times uh, when there's smoke, there's a fire. And so it's important that you that we understand that and don't just dismiss this as someone looking for fame. Like I said, I'm gonna reiterate this, it's very rare when a potential victim comes forward that they're trying to get anything other than just to do the right thing and um, let's just go through it so um, easy was framed uh, his name's easy he's got a long name I can't pronounce it he was framed as a desirable romantic prospect and became a fan favorite how should the show have responded to an assault allegation against him and of course if they did any background checks on him nothing would have showed up because he wasn't arrested or filed no charges were filed but obviously morality clauses um, you don't want, you know, as a, you know, ABC owned by Disney, the show The Bachelorette, one of their biggest shows out there, they really need to do a good job of vetting their contestants. And we'll talk about a few contestants in the past that have been problems. So the, uh, the victim's name's Lauren. She doesn't give her a last name. She's deleted the tweet that initially started all this because she really is not looking for anything other than just, just to share her story. She, um, she knew that he would be on The Bachelorette when it premiered in October. His name was on the cast list that had been released. They attended the same high school and had overlapping friend groups. So it didn't take long for the news to reach her that he would be featured on a popular reality show. Uh, on the morning of the premiere, Lauren asked, uh, she asked Huffington Post to without, uh, withhold her last name out of concerns for her privacy. She caught a glimpse of a Bachelorette promo on a mutual friend's Instagram story. Suddenly, the reality of the situation hit home. Um, and by the way, I do suggest before anyone comments on this video, read the article for yourself. It's important to read the article and get all of the facts that you have at your disposal before we start talking about things because no point in sharing an opinion if you haven't read um, all the facts that pertain to it. She said she was rattled and it triggered a panic attack so intense that she had to pull her car over to the side of the road. She had good reason to be rattled. In multiple interviews, she told HuffPost that uh, EZ sexually assaulted her at a party 10 years ago when she was 18, a high school student, and he was a sophomore in college. Um, he did not respond to multiple requests for comment. Lauren never went. She, Lauren never wanted to go to the press. The only reason she shared her story now is that after going through formal channels and speaking multiple times with a lawyer hired by Bachelorette producers, Lauren was told that her allegations had been deemed inconclusive and that no further action would be taken. Her quotes, she said, I don't want money, I don't want fame, I just want to be taken out of the public realm where he has access to a plethora of vulnerable women. HuffPost has interviewed multiple people who confirmed that Lauren had spoken to them about assault over the last eight years. This is big. They have multiple sources that say she told them way before Easy was on a reality show and this and that, that she told them what had happened. HuffPost spoke to two other women who had violate, who had violating sexual relationships with Easy. After, after Lauren and a friend of hers tweeted about the experience with him, these two women reached out via direct message. Both told HuffPost that no one from the show contacted them to speak about Easy. Uh, because these allegations became public on Twitter after the show had wrapped, so the show had already been shot. Um, because the uh, contestant in question had not been charged or convicted of any crime, Bachelorette production had few incentives to take concrete action or remove him. So basically they had already shot the show, 
there was no criminal record, no like legal footprint. So what Bachelorette producers did was they hired a lawyer to vet her story. And as, and as soon as they were able to cover their own ass, that's all they did. They didn't really change his storyline or any arcs. In the past, we'll discuss a few times where they were able to kick people off the show early on. But in this case, they couldn't find anything because nothing came to light till he kind of had a little bit of celebrity. Uh, again, I'm not saying uh, that Bachelorette's in the right, but here's what is important to understand. As far as morality goes, you just can't expect people and corporations to do the right thing. Um, they're just gonna do whatever they can to cover themselves. That's why there's a minimum wage. That's why there's maximum, maximum work hours and all these rules and unions because uh, people inherently will take advantage of others. In The Bachelor, if they're not held accountable, they're like, fine, whatever. There was no record, whatever, what do you want us to do? You know, blur out his name? They have no, Bachelor has no problem blurring out every butt crack on the show, but they didn't blur out his face. Uh, the investigation, so The Bachelorette, they first released the men um, uh, way back in July, and um, a friend of Lauren's attempted to reach out to ABC about the allegations against him through a general audience feedback contact form. By all means, ABC Pride didn't get this, I mean, by all means. Uh, who knows who knows what intern you know this email address goes to um but then filming was underway and then on the night of the premiere lauren and uh basically tweeted this is what lauren tweeted on the night of the premiere she said it's that easy for him to take advantage of women without their consent too all i want is to not relive my drama over and over again by letting this man exist on a public sphere that's what she said her friend now her uh, lauren's friend was more explicit her friend said not watching at Bachelor at ABC this season because they have an actual rapist on. Uh, then she tagged Bachelor creator Mike Fleiss, Fleece Fleiss, host Chris Harrison, ABC senior VP of alternative programming Rob Mills, um, Bachelor at Claire Crowley, and Easy in her tweets. Um, so on October 21st, what day was that? That was um, October 13th. On October 21st, Lauren receives a text from a lawyer, Ann Kalfas, who's a partner at, at LA law firm MSK, who said that she had been hired by the producer of The Bachelorette to discuss the issue she had raised. Um, they made plans to FaceTime, and then Lauren said on October 23rd, she had a 90-minute video call with Calfus during which she disclosed graphic details of her assault. Lauren also sent Calfus screenshots of two DMs from women who said they had previously been involved with Easy, as well as photos from the New Year's Eve party where Lauren was allegedly assaulted, and a screenshot of the generic response email that her friend had received from ABC in July. Uh, so now HuffPost does the work to review, and again, this might sound very litigious and like kind of rambling, but this is important stuff to know because we live in a world where everyone just says, oh, fake news, fake this. Well, you know, th there's screenshots and timestamps of the night in, in question here. You know, this isn't just some journal scribbled in like Kavanaugh over here. Um, uh, she did, so HuffPost, they've reviewed the screenshots of Lauren's text with Calfus, as well as a screenshot of her phone log that shows a one hour and 29 minute FaceTime call that took place between Lauren's cell phone and Calfus's number. The problem I have here in defense of, of Lauren, um, I believe that's her first name or her pseudonym, uh, is that you, you know for sure this lawyer was hired by ABC to just make sure that they weren't gonna get sued. So I'm sure she came into it being like, oh, you know, like we wanna hear your story, you know, trying to get as much info as possible when she's really working for the man and the man just wanted to make sure that he's covered uh, a few days later a 15-minute conversation Lauren said that Calfus, the lawyer uh, informed her that the investigation had concluded according to Lauren Calfus said she had spoken to easy and two mutual friends who were present at the party where the alleged assault occurred and told Lauren that the investigation had been ruled inconclusive and I mean what, what can you do you know what I mean this is a decade ago so maybe it was inconclusive, like short of a, you know, a smoking gun, you know, you just have people's story. But it doesn't mean the story's not true. What it means is ABC probably felt that they were okay airing him and knowing that they weren't gonna get sued. They kind of were between a rock and a hard place in a sense, because as you'll see, if they kicked Easy off the show, they might be, you know, uh, you know, might have a lawsuit against them by Easy for some different form of discrimination. Um, Easy is not the first Bachelorette contestant to face allegations of this nature. Uh, in recent years, what happened on Becca Cuffrin's season just two years ago in 2018, news broke that a contestant named Lincoln had been convicted of indecent assault earlier that year. He wasn't edited out of the show. I think they found this out late in the season as well, 
but um, he wasn't at, or maybe they found out afterwards, but the production team and Chris Harrison, the show's host, vocally distanced themselves from, uh, from Lincoln. In 2019, a contestant left the mansion early in the filming of Hannah Brown season, reportedly because credible abuse allegations against him had surfaced. Why are they waiting till night one? Again, I understand sometimes information doesn't come to light until somebody, you know, is either famous or is in the limelight. I totally understand that. The problem I have is that Bachelor producers, and Chris Harrison, he's a producer on the show. He runs that show. He's a face of the show. They decided, and again, I could be wrong. I will retract this if I'm wrong. But they decided they weren't liable. There wasn't enough information to back her claims. So they weren't going to do anything about it. That's what they decided. And they said, you know what? We don't need to do anything about it. How about have the conversation you have what 20 plus shows they do an hour after the final rose ceremony a men tell all they have plenty of time to have this conversation have the conversation now i, I am sure easy has lawyers and i'm sure he's not going to talk about this on air but wouldn't it be nice for chris harrison you know the bachelor nation is probably 80 percent women i only say that because about 90 percent of people who watch my bachelor recaps are women so it's it it, it, they're, your, they're your core audience. So how about Chris Harrison? You stand up there and say, one of our contestants was accused of rape. The allegations are very credible, but after 10 years and without concrete proof, there isn't much legally that can be done about it. But we just thought we'd let you guys know that you can Google this, it's out there. He's innocent till proven guilty, but she's also someone who's rightfully got her voice and should be believed as well. And a lot of times in the world, because of litigious reasons or this or that, everyone's just quiet about it. Well, Chris Harrison, come on, this is your show. This show has made you a multi, multi-millionaire. You get to travel the world. And, and half the time, you destroy people's credibility, their character. You sue Luke P for $100,000 for speaking out about how he felt like his, his character was destroyed. You've got other people that have mental health issues that have recently attempted suicide. All these things, you put them on a show, you light it on fire, and then you just let them go. Where is the social justice to not just produce the show, but really try to help people out that surround themselves on the show. That's the question I have, and that's the challenge I have. So when I read this, I believe the victim, but I also believe ABC could have done more, if not you know, legally required to, they should have. They have a commitment if they're gonna be showing this, this world of love to really show the nitty gritty and how not everyone's perfect and people are flawed and they can't always catch the bad guy before they put him on the show, but they can at least address it. And I think that's what we want. We're like, we're like the kid whose parents are fighting and we're like, can we just call out that you guys are getting a divorce? Like we're, we're like the kid that's screaming, can we just all be real here? You know, why are we, you know, why are we blurring out butt cheeks and blurring out side boob and, and, you know, you know, calling it the fantasy suite when we all know what it is. And then what we're afraid to talk about, uh, real issues like domestic violence, real issues like stalking, you know what I mean? So a lot of people will come to the defense of easy. He came off very well on the show. And I, uh, you know, before I get out of here, I'll just say she just wanted to share her story, the victim, because she didn't want other people to be preyed on by him. That's really her only obligation she felt she needed to do. She wasn't looking for anything monetary. She's not looking for fame. It's not about that. But that's going to be the leading easy comment from people in the comment section is to go, well, she's just looking for her. He's 15 minutes and this and that. And it's like, you've got it so wrong. You've got it so wrong. Uh, a sexual harassment attorney had this to say. She said, the reason an employer, her name's Jessica Westerman, the reason an employer conducts an investigation is so that they can say, we conducted an investigation and it was inconclusive. They're just covering their own ass. That's really it. She's a sexual harassment attorney who helped represent uh, Kelly Kim, the woman who was sexually harassed uh, by a fellow contestant on the set of Survivor. So like these things happen and the corporations do need to cover themselves. But at the same time, it's not just about covering yourselves from some sort of liability and some sort of lawsuit. It's about like you're broadcasting shows to millions of people. So why don't you put the good foot forward to actually shine light on the fact that these situations exist out there? 
You know, they'd rather just play God and pretend it doesn't exist and cover their own ass, but as long as you're gonna be making money off of showing the stories and lives of these everyday people, why don't you show the toxic stuff? Why don't you show the, you know, the toxic love, the codependency, the uh, domestic violence, the manipulation, the gaslighting, the sexual assaults, and the, you know, this all exists out there and it keeps on existing by a lack of conversation. No one's perfect. We've got the uh, the latest bachelorette, Taisha's ex, uh, cheated on her, and they broke up, and they're, you know, who said, she said, and it's, it's one thing after another. It can be very complicated, but what's not complicated is if someone comes out with a story, you just believe them, and Huffington Post, they contacted her friends, stories that have been vetted for years. They made, they made it, it's not as simple as just sending out a, treat, a tweet saying, I'm a victim. They They actually did the work, and until, proven otherwise, we have to trust the credibility there. Uh, they said to the extent that this comes out now, all they're going to do, uh, uh, ABC and Bachelor, is suffer a bad PR um, because the alleged assault did not occur within an employment context. They didn't incur any additional risk by saying nothing. On the other hand, she pointed out, if the show had publicly disavowed Easy, it could have opened itself up to legal action in the form of a defamation or racial discrimination lawsuit. So I guess you have to understand that too. Maybe what I said, you know, maybe the reason that Chris Harrison doesn't address it is because they don't want to get sued. But the point remains is that if we're too busy suing each other, we can't have a real conversation. Do you know what I mean? I'm sure they could have handled it in a way where they don't out who the contestant was legally so they're not going to be, you know, um, on the receiving end of a lawsuit, but they can address the obvious elephant in the room. Um, after the investigation was closed, Easy continued to be an audience favorite on The Bachelorette. He was beloved by some fans for his sunny personality and humorous commentary on show drama, and he developed strong relationships with Crowley and subsequently with Adams, the two different Bachelorettes. In the episode that aired on December 1st, the former NFL player was eliminated by the show. Look, he's a fan favorite. People loved him, and, if, and with my two eyes, I watched him, knowing in the background that there was an allegation against him, but I watched him going, I can see why he's a fan favorite. He's charming, he's likable, he's attractive. It it doesn't mean that this didn't happen. Decent people can do bad things. I hope this is a good example of us believing the victim and not trying to drag her through the mud and looking at this objectively. So again, before you leave a comment, read the article. I'll put a link in the description from HuffPost and uh, let me know what you guys think and uh, always remember to stay respectful um, of everybody in a situation like this. I'm Dave Neal. I'll see you guys next time. Bye everybody.